Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's class, we will discuss about seed and seed technology. Before we start, let us know about what are the four main parts of flower. The first part is green leaf-like structure called as sepal. The group of sepal is calyx. The second part is petal. Group of petal is corolla. Then the third part is stamen or androsium which is male reproductive part which consists anther and the filament. Then fourth part is pistil or also called as carpel or gynosium which is female reproductive part which consists stigma, style and ovary. Within the ovary there are bead like structures called as vowel. So after pollination and fertilization, these vowels will develop into seed and the ovary will form into fruit. Let us know how these seeds are going to form. These are the three steps which are involved in seed formation. The first step is pollination, then second fertilization and the third one is seed formation. So after pollination and fertilization, the vowry will increase in size and it forms a fruit. Whereas vowel that has an embryo in it and it becomes seed. The ovary wall will become fruit wall. And the seed contains an embryo which is enclosed in an protective layer called a seed coat. Let us know one by one. So the first step is pollination. Pollination is nothing but the transfer of pollen grains from anthers to the stigma of same flower or to the different flower. This is pollination. Once this pollen grains comes in contact with the receptive stigma, the pollen grain germinates and it produces pollen tube all along the style and also this pollen grain releases two sperm cells in the pollen tube. So once this pollen grain comes in contact with the stigma it produces pollen tube and also releases two sperm cells. Finally this pollen tube that reaches ovule and it releases two sperm cells into the embryo sac. So you can see here the single enlarged structure of this single vowel. So this is the structure of embryo sac. Towards the chalazal end there are three antipolar cells and at the center there are two polar nuclei and towards the micropylar end there are two synergids and one excel. As this pollen grain comes in contact with the receptive stigma, it germinates and start to produce pollen tube. All along the pollen tube, it releases two sperm cells. So finally this pollen tube enters this embryo sac from the micropylar region and it releases two sperm cells into the embryo sac. One sperm cell that fuses with egg cell and produces zygote which is deployed in condition and the further development of this zygote leads to the development of embryo. And the other sperm cell that will fuses with two polar nuclei and produces primary endosperm nucleus initially. And the further development of this primary endosperm nucleus leads to the development of endosperm which is triploid in nature. So whereas double fertilization is nothing but the fusion of one sperm cell with egg cell leads to the development of zygote and the another sperm cell with the two polar nuclei. So these two fertilizations happen simultaneously. That's what the name is double fertilization. Whereas triple fusion it is a fusion which involves the fusion of two polar nuclei 
and one sperm cell. This is the structure of seed. You can see here the dicot seed and the monocot seed. The seed consists mainly three parts. The one is outermost seed coat and two cotyledons in case of dicot and the embryo. The embryo consists epicotyl, hypocotyl and radical. Whereas in case of monocot, it consists a shield shape single cotyledon along with embryo and the reserved food material that is endosperm, it nourishes growing embryo when it is required. This is the structure of dicot seed and you can refer here the structure of dicot seed and the monocot seed. Now let us know what is the seed, what exactly the means of seed. So after knowing this pollination, fertilization, you will easily define this seed. Seed is a fertilized, matured vowel which consists of embryo, reserved food materials and protective seed coat. It is also can be defined as any part of a plant which can be used for propagation that is called as seed or it may be a true seed or any vegetatively propagating material such as seedlings, cuttings, bulbs, tubers, rhizomes and roots. They are also referred as seed. Seed have life. So as we know seed consists of embryo that from that embryo we are going to get new seedling or plantlet. That's why the seed have a life. The true seed is an embryo which is a living organism embedded in the supporting and food storage tissue. Seed is mainly used for sowing or planting purpose. The main function of seed is reproduction whereas the grain. So grain is mainly used for consumption purpose by human being as a food and feed by animals and grain may or may not be alive. Do you think is there any difference between seed and grain? Yes, there is a difference. So let us discuss what are the differences between the seed and grain. Seed is scientifically produced for the sowing purpose whereas grain is commercially produced by the farmers for the consumption purpose. Seed should be viable one whereas in grain it need not to be viable. Seed should have maximum genetic and physical purity that is not so in case of grain. Seed should satisfy minimum seed certification standards whereas grain no such requirements. Seed should be completely treated with pesticides or fungicides to protect the seed against storage pest and diseases whereas grain it should never be treated with any chemicals since we are using it for consumption purpose. Whereas in case of seed, respiration rate, other physiological and biological processes should be kept at a low level during the storage to avoid further deterioration during the storage. No such specifications are followed in grain. Seed should be compulsorily labeled, whereas no such condition in case of a grain production. Seed should never be converted into grains unless it is not treated with any chemicals. Grain can be converted as a seed provided that all the quality parameters are maintained in case of grain. Seed should satisfy all the quality norms whereas that's not considered in case of grain. So these are some of the differences between seed and grain. Let us move to the next concept that is seed technology. What do you mean by seed technology? Seed technology is a science or a technique that deals with seed production, seed processing, seed storage, seed testing, seed certification, seed marketing and distribution and the other related research on these aspects. So this is the definition of seed technology. Now the role of seed technology or the importance of seed technology. So improved seed it's a carrier of new technology and it's a basic tool for secure food supply. 
An improved seed, it acts as a principal means to secure crop yields even under less favorable conditions. It also acts as the medium for rapid rehabilitation of agriculture in cases of natural disasters. So now let us discuss the goals or objectives of seed technology. The main objective of seed technology is to increase agricultural production through the spread of good quality seeds of high yielding varieties. The first goal is rapid multiplication of seeds of improved high yielding varieties. The seeds should be made available to the farmers in the quickest possible time. Then the second one, timely supply of improved seeds of new varieties to the farmers well in time so that they may get timely planting and harvesting of the quality seed thereby they'll get benefit of this using quality seeds. Then the third one, assure high quality seeds. In order to obtain expected dividends or profits from the use of seeds of improved variety, the seed must be ensure high quality. Then fourth one is reasonable price. The cost of high quality seed should be within the reach of the average farmers. That means the price should be so reasonable that even the normal farmer can also easily purchase the good quality seed. These are the goals of seed technology. Now let us discuss the significance of quality seed or importance of the using of quality seed. Good quality seed of improved varieties, they ensures higher yield at least by 10 to 12 percent. It also ensures genetic purity and the physical purity of the crop fields. It gives desired plant population in the field. Good quality seeds, they can withstand against adverse climatic conditions so that they, thereby they will give good yield. Seedlings which are produced by the quality seeds, they are more vigorous, fast growing and they can also resistance to the pests and diseases to the certain extent. It ensures the uniform growth and maturity of the crop plant in the field. Because of development of a well root system that will be more efficient and also helps in the absorption of nutrients efficiently thereby it results in higher yield. Then the next one, it will respond well to the added fertilizers and other inputs thereby the vigorous growth of the plants and higher yield. Overall, using of good quality seeds will alone use higher yield at least by 10 to 12 percent. So this is about significance or importance of quality seed. This is all about seed and seed technology introduction. Thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe my channel. If you have any queries, let me know in the comment section.